119, Homer City. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and WCCSradio.com, 11 minutes after 8. And Dr. Matthew Nettleton is with us this morning. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mack, voted best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people, and uh, Dr. Nettleton helping us to put a cap, if you will, on Men's Health Month. June is Men's Health Month. We're getting toward the end of the month, but it doesn't mean you get to quit paying attention to your health, guys. That's why he's here to tell us all about that. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you with us here today. Let's let's talk a little bit about men's health and uh, and and start with where we should all be starting, and that's at our primary care physician. That's important, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. That's the first step is to establish with a primary care doc. If you don't have one, you got to get one. Um, if you do, you want to schedule an annual physical very important is there an age at which guys can say okay now i'm going to start paying attention to this and i should start going to the doctor some people say 30 40 50 whatever it happens to be or should that be something that we've been doing ever since we were kids actually uh even after the age of 20 you should have visits with your doctor not necessarily annually but maybe about every three years i mean there's no perfect guidelines on this one but about every three years Mm -hmm. there should be some assessment even for cardiovascular risk even people in their 20s yeah we're hearing of course uh, about uh, things when when we have dr clark on he talks about the fact that uh, colon cancer is being discovered at a much younger age in guys now exactly And, and ladies too yeah yeah and that's why they lowered the age from 50 to 45 Uh, a few years ago in response to that. Um, Yeah, that's a very important test. Unlike a lot of the other screening tests, colon cancer screening actually can prevent colon cancer. Tests that we have for prostate cancer screening, breast cancer screening, these tests detect cancer early. Early enough, hopefully you can do something about it, but colon cancer screening, you can actually detect it before it's cancer. If someone has a polyp, you remove it, it never becomes a problem. Yeah, yeah. So when we're thinking about guys specifically, since we're talking Men's Health Month, sure. and we automatically think of prostate cancer of as, as the, the big thing that we need to check for, and we do. And we do, yes. Are, yeah. there, are there other concerns for guys that they should pay particular attention to? I mean, we're always concerned, and this isn't necessarily unique to males. I mean, well, I shouldn't say that. Males, say, uh, age uh, 15 to 35, uh, a little higher risk for testicular cancer. So that's something, I mean, all males should kind of be doing self-examinations. Um, and of course, when they see their doctor, they should be getting examined as well. Um, but typically, that's very rare. Um, they don't really have a, a set screening test. There's no blood test, uh, no uh, x-ray or imaging for that. Um, but uh, prostate cancer, of course, um, yeah. you know, very important. One out of eight American males will be affected by prostate cancer, which is a, a huge statistic. Um, and it's a simple test. Just you get in, see your primary care doc. They'll order a PSA once a year. Typically, we start at age 50. Age 50 is the time to start, but if you have a family history um, or actually our African-American uh, population, they actually should, should start earlier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the treatment for prostate cancer, that whole protocol has changed over the years, hasn't it? And, yeah. and often. Yeah, there's a lot of options for uh, treating prostate cancer. Um, uh, you know, it varies from radiation treatments. We have seed implants. Um, we have a, with something called external beam radiation. And then, of course, uh, removing the prostate. And a lot of that's done now by uh, robotics. Uh, so the recovery time's a lot better. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there are actually some cases where you just simply, you know, you, you know someone has prostate cancer and you just simply watch. You don't do anything but just sort of watch it uh-huh. uh, over over several years before you do anything. Monitor for growth. You just monitor, yeah, especially based on age. I mean, if someone's older with prostate cancer, um, you know, it's, it's kind of ironic because, you know, the longer we live, the more chance we uh, have of getting prostate cancer, but the less chance you die from prostate cancer. So mm. if you get diagnosed in your 70s, uh, you know, the chance of you dying from that is low. If you're diagnosed at 50, uh, it's it's an urgent matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's one uh, very, very important part of a men's a man's health um, mm-hmm. and, and certainly something that we need to take very, very seriously. What other screenings should guys sure. go for typically? Yeah, and, and then all the standard screenings. They're not just unique to males, but I mean, it's very important. Um, there is a higher risk of uh, cardiovascular disease amongst males, so we definitely want to get... Uh, screen people for hypertension at their annual physical. Um, look at their cholesterol panels. With a cholesterol panel, we can actually determine what is your 10-year risk of a cardiovascular event. We just take a number of variables from your age, your sex, uh, and actually look at your cholesterol numbers. And uh, depending on that, we can actually calculate what uh, what your risk is, and that's important. 
Yeah. Because that determines how aggressive you are about uh, treating it, whether you need medications or you continue with lifestyle yeah. modifications, you know. Yeah. And, and, and that sort of leads into the general discussion of what is a healthy lifestyle to be leading because heart health is so sure. uh, much a topic these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so that visit, that's also important for the, you know, for the doctor just to encourage healthy lifestyle habits, uh, you know, uh, uh, good sleep. Uh, a healthy diet, low in saturated fats, uh, low in processed foods, which is very difficult these days. Um, and of course, exercise. Exercise is really important. And you know, sometimes people think they have to do a really, a very rigorous exercise program. But even if you just walk for 30 minutes or so, five days a week, mm-hmm. uh, that's it has, it has huge, huge benefits. Of course, we live in Western Pennsylvania, and uh, some folks uh, they say, well, in the summertime it's too hot. I'm not going to get out there and do that. Uh, as you were telling me, your son's living in, uh, in, oh, in Arizona, Arizona yeah. right now. He knows what hot is. 115 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, uh, but then we'll also say that in the wintertime, it's, it's like there's always an excuse. There's a, right. There is always, right. There's always, uh, always an excuse. But I think you, I think everyone knows you, you, you have to take that time to take care of yourself. I mean, it's very important. You know, that's why we have gyms. We have, we have places indoors where we, where we can do all that. Uh, yeah. Swimming is great. Swimming is excellent. And that you can do year round. And that's great for people that are older, people that have joint problems because it's very low impact on the body. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I'm a big fan of swimming. I wanted to get into joint health again because uh, that can impact your health in a number of different ways. If your legs don't feel good, your hips, your knees, whatever it is, if they don't feel good, you are less likely to want to exercise. Uh, those things can be taken care of. I don't want to say easily, but they can be handily taken care of. Uh, yeah, they can be taken care of. I mean, if someone has um, you know, osteoarthritis, afflicts so many people. Um, there are uh, regimens we have for people to uh, manage their pain. Uh, sometimes you can't completely manage pain. Uh, of course, if it's severe enough, you know, they may need a joint replacement. Um, but uh, yeah, it's definitely important to uh, get that taken care of so you can try to live a healthy lifestyle. Talking with Dr. Matthew Nettleton during Men's Health Month here on Indiana in the Morning, you mentioned diet. Uh, and and certainly that's something that everybody should begin paying attention to, probably much younger than we do. Yeah, actually. So they've done studies, um, and this maybe sounds kind of morbid, but even in uh, pediatric populations, uh, post-mortem studies, when they look at um, a child's uh, vasculature inside a blood vessel, they even start laying down plaque uh, at a young age, Hmm. even as children. And then, of course, that plaque progression, it just depends on your lifestyle and and genetics. And, of course, if you smoke, you five cheeseburgers a day, you don't exercise, that, that plaque progression happens quicker and it may become critical yeah. uh, at a later age or even an earlier age. Smoking? Smoking, of course. Yeah, smoking. I mean, we always encourage people to, you know, quit smoking or certainly don't, stop, don't start smoking. Yeah. yeah. That's a tough one to lick. That's a very, I mean, nicotine, it's actually second to opiates in uh, terms of hardest, hardest drug to quit. Uh, yeah, to uh, opiates. This yeah. is number two, which is unbelievable. But, you know, of course, some of that is the accessibility of it, but it really gets a hold of you. Alcohol and substance abuse mm-hmm. as well. Those are those are big factors in a man's health. Sure, sure, yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, I, 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 I drink alcohol myself, but we just have to be, um, you know, everything in moderation is, is, is the key. Um, you know, as a rule, we, we tell men um, no more than two drinks per day. That's about the most your liver can process in a day. And when I say a drink, you know, I don't mean a heavy pour. I mean, you know, a beer or four ounces of wine. Um, and uh, women, it's one drink a day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Guys have a tendency to say, I know it'll catch up with me someday. People have been telling me that all my life. Mm-hmm. But it can catch up with you a lot quicker uh, if, if you're not doing the healthy things in your life. And, and we're reluctant to go to the doctor, aren't we? Yeah, I think a lot of males are. I think, I think that trend is changing, though. I mean, I, I don't know if it's the information highway. I, I, you know, the internet, uh, smartphones. I mean, you're bombarded with health information all day. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'll have, I'll have patients, you know, my male patients now, they're coming to me, hey, are you, are you checking me for diabetes? And I'll say, yeah, I check you every year for diabetes. They're, they're not even aware that I'm checking them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're checking for diabetes. I, I think the, 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 the people today, they're definitely more savvy, more knowledgeable, but they still have a ways to go. Mm-hmm. You know, still a ways to go, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, but that, that medical connection with the medical professionals, the people who know what they're talking about is, is such a vital link. Correct. Very important. I mean, there's a lot of information out there. There's a, there's also a lot of bad information out there. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's good to have a discussion with your doctor to discern, you know, what's, what's uh, credible and what's not credible. 
Um, you know, we use some different sources than the general public to, yeah. to gain our knowledge. And most of it, it's, it's, we try to do as best we can evidence-based medicine, you know, mm-hmm. things that have actually been tested. And, you know, does this work, does it not work? Uh, so. Let me take you back a couple of years to the pandemic and its effect on our health today. Mm-hmm. Are, are we more or are we less or is there no noticeable difference uh, in the way that we mm-hmm. uh, think of going to the doctor and, and using the medical professionals that are out there for us? Um, I, you know, that's a tough one for me to answer. I, 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 don't, I don't really know on that one. I mean, I think, um, you know, COVID right now, uh, it, it's definitely, uh, fortunately, has, has died down in incidents. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you know, but it's still an issue. It's still, I mean, it can still affect people. Um, there are, um, you know, it's really tough because a lot of people, you know, they don't, there's a mindset, uh, I see it. Some people are all for vaccinations, they're gung-ho, and they're very adamant about it. I have other people that are very leery, suspicious, and I honestly think it has to just do with the political times. I mean, it just depends on who's yeah. in office. It determines what people do and how they, you know, whether they get a vaccine or not, yeah. which is really not the way they should be making those decisions. Um, but uh, like I said, right right now, it's COVID is still an issue. We still have cases. Um, we still encourage vaccinations at this point. Uh, I'm hoping that this, because you know, COVID, coronavirus has been out forever. It's been out for centuries, okay? It's just that mm-hmm. this was a, um, you know, a mutated version, yeah. a lethal version. We're hoping, we're seeing it sort of, mutate into something a little bit more natural where because coronavirus is caused cold when people have colds in the fall that was very likely a coronavirus but now this one was just like uh, amped up essentially yeah. Yeah. so um yeah but it's, it's still challenging dr matthew nettleton our guest here this morning on indiana in the morning we're talking about men's health let's get back to where we started primary care physician so very very important not so hard to find a primary care physician. No, there. there's a lot of great primary care physicians. I mean, I, I, I'm not here to plug our group, but we have a very big group. We have actually seven providers. We work out of two offices uh, here in Indiana and also at uh, IRMC's Chestnut facility. Uh, so we have seven providers. There's three doctors, uh, including myself. We have two nurse practitioners, two physician's assistants. Um, but there are, you know, there there's are plenty of plenty of uh, hospital employed primary care physicians that could uh, service the community. You yeah. just have to reach out. You just have to, you know, make that call and call the hospital. They'll get you connected to one. Get it done. They, get it done. Get it done. I mean, these things are so important. I mean, you, you can actually, you know, that old adage, you know. Uh, uh, an ounce of uh, prevention is worth a pound of cure. It really holds up, and that's what we do. That's the bread and butter of what we do as primary care physicians. Yeah, sometimes I feel like this conversation would be better directed at the ladies because they're the only ones we'll listen to. So wives, <laughs> that's true. wives, that's wives get on the guy and, and, right. and get him moving. All right. Somebody wants to get in touch with your group uh, and get affiliated. What should they do? Well, they can call our office. Uh, they can actually, even if they call the hospital switchboard, uh, you know, they, everyone knows our group. They can, yeah. they, can, they can get connected to us. So, yes. Terrific. Mm-hmm. Thanks for the visit. I okay. appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, WCCSradio.com. And coming up just a couple of moments away from now, Boomer Sports and then Josh from the WCCS Newsroom. 